Bobby, you failed to unseat President Museveni in January. You have been placed under house arrest. Your supporters have been detained, beaten, or worse. Your life has been threatened. How safe are you in Uganda right now? Well, uh, first of all, um, I would thank you for the opportunity to speak to the world. Uh, we did not just fail to unseat General Museveni, but uh, like he has been doing uh, over the years, he rigged uh, the election, switched off the internet, and like you put it, uh, put me under house arrest, arrested, tortured, and murdered uh, hundreds, if not thousands, of Ugandans. Uh, indeed, my life is in danger in Uganda, but not just my life, but the lives of very many young men and women who dare to speak truth to power in Uganda. So for people watching this program who might not know that much about what's happening in, in Uganda, what do you want the world to know about the state of human rights and the state of freedom of speech in Uganda, especially for people who dare to speak out against uh, Museveni? Well, I would want the world to know that Uganda is a country of 45 million people, 85 of which is under the age of 35 a country that has been under the firm military grip of General Yoweri Museveni for the last 35 years. Uh, every five years, uh, elections have been uh, are, uh, organized. However, they have all turned out to be fraudulent elections, including the most recent election, where um, the Internet was completely switched off. Uh, uh, I, the biggest contender, was put under house arrest. My entire campaign team arrested and kept under illegal detention for half a year. Many were killed and others are still missing. That is the state of affairs in Uganda where there's no human rights whatsoever, uh, where there's no rule of law, where political um, dissenters, anybody that dares to speak truth to power, is arrested and arraigned not in a civil court but in a military court. And here's the thing, the U.S. has condemned many times, actually, the human rights abuses taking place under Museveni. However, at the same time, the U.S. continues to support Museveni through billions of dollars in aid. It's not just the U.S., it's also U.S.-backed institutions as well. What do you make of that? Well, um, for starters, uh, it's important to know that uh, the standards of human rights in Uganda in particular, and in Africa in general, should be the same standard with the rest of the world. While we appreciate the constant condemnation of human rights uh, abuses and uh, the disrespect of the rule of law and democratic principles, we think that the United States and indeed the entire Western world can do more than the rhetoric, can do more than the strong statements, because it is rather contradictory and uh, hypocritical, for lack of a better word, to speak out against the abuse of human rights and yet at the same time continuously uh, fund uh, General Museveni, the United so, States uh, taxpayer. So what do you want them to do? What do you want the U.S. to do specifically? Well, we want the United States to make the respect for human rights and uh, uh, the rule of law a precondition for aid and funding in Uganda. We want them to stop funding our oppressor, to stop paying for the murder of Ugandans. So in terms of what happens next, I mean, obviously, you know, you didn't make it to the presidency, but you have an enormous amount of influence in Uganda. How are you using it going forward? Well, um, like I've been mentioning, that uh, the entire agenda is not just for me to become president but to see freedom, to see change, and to see respect for human rights, to see that the, Africa, the, the lives of the people of Uganda and the people of Africa have the same regard and the same dignity like the rest of the world. We uh, stood for the election, and indeed we won it, uh, although General Museveni, using the military and other institutions of state, declared himself president. We are now taking our front to the international uh, fronts. We want to call out uh, the funders, the international community, to stop funding for the homegrown terror of General Museveni, to stop paying for the murder of innocent men and women in Uganda. And we want the 
uh, international community, and in particular the American taxpayer, to know um, that it is their taxpayers' dollars that, up, uh, that is paying for the abuse of human rights in Uganda. And we know that that can stop. We want the world to know that Africa does not need dictators. And we want the United States and the entire uh, development community to know that they do not need dictators in Africa to further their interests. The interests of the United States can well be uh, furthered with a free Uganda, with human rights observed in Uganda and in Africa at large. So from the U.S.'s perspective, they will tell you that they don't just simply write Museveni a blank check. They don't just give out a blank check to Uganda. That the money they spend, the billions of dollars they give to Uganda every year actually goes towards lifting ordinary Ugandan citizens out of poverty, many of whom are young people, including your supporters. What do you say to that? Well, I would say that there is what uh, the, there's a certain rosy picture that is painted uh, for the international community about Uganda. And here I am speaking for the millions of Ugandans uh, on ground. I was elected by millions of Ugandans. I represent uh, more than 85 percent of the people of Uganda. And this is the truth that I'm giving to the world, that what the General Museveni, uh, the image, the rosy image that General Museveni is painting about Uganda is actually not what's happening. And that is why General Museveni contracts various companies, including a comp an American company called Mercury, to paint a rosy picture about Uganda. But the reality on ground is that um, the billions of dollars that are given to the regime in Uganda are actually used to suppress dissent, to suppress all rights of the people of Uganda. And final question. There are several, at least a handful, of African leaders that have been in power since before you and I were born. You and I are both roughly around the same age. I'm talking about Obiang in Equatorial Guinea. I'm talking about Paul Biya in Cameroon. Obviously, Museveni has been around for a very, very long time. Given all of that, are you hopeful about the state of democracy in Africa? Well, hope is the last thing that I want to lose. Hope is the only thing that we're holding on to in Africa generally and particularly in Uganda. We know that uh, the international community has been rubbing shoulders with dictators, which is uh, a very bad image which are hypocritical, which should change. We know that uh, the interests of the international community in many times tend to come first. The United States has been seen many times to put first the business interests before rights and freedoms. And we call upon them once more uh, to remind them that their interests can be furthered in a democratic Africa, in an Africa that respects human rights. It would be a better image. We know that uh, uh, dictators like Idi Amin, like uh, Omar el-Bashir, we know dictators like uh, Biang and indeed like Museveni have been working closely with the United States and the development uh, world. But we know that they can, be, they can do better uh, because we are also human beings and we want our human rights to be gauged on the same standards like the rest of the world. Bobby Wine. Thank you so much for uh, being on the program.